Now we know that there are two accounts in the Credit Cooperative Society. Form N is considered to be profit and loss account, and you have to write for the year ended in that. The format is there. You have to study that format perfectly, and accordingly you have to transfer the amounts. There are two columns: uh, expenditure and income. On the debit side, that is expenditure. You have to take all the interest paid and the payable. The second will be the bank charges. Third will be salaries and allowances of staff. Fourth, contribution to staff provident fund. Fifth, salaries and allowances of managing director. Sixth, attendance fees and travelling expenses of directors and committee members. Seventh, travelling expenses of staff. Eighth, rent rates and taxes. Ninth, postage, telegram and telephone charges. 10th printing and stationery 11th audit fees 12th general expenses 13th bad debts provision written off 14th depreciation on fixed assets 15th land income and expenditure and 16th other items on the credit side that is income you have to take all the incomes here the first is interest received it can be on loans and advances or on investments second is dividend received on shares third is commission fourth is miscellaneous income in which includes share transfer fees rent rebate in interest sale of forms other items and the fifth is land income and expenditure always remember when we are closing this profit and loss you have to see whether it's net profit or not so you have to total the debit side that is expenditure and the credit side that is income you have to deduct both if the amount is less on the debit side it is considered to be net profit so you can see the 17th part expenditure side 17th part is nothing but net profit carried to balance sheet that is the difference amount uh, now we can see the next slide students it's nothing but the balance sheet it's also known as form n okay balance sheet as on you have to write liabilities and assets on the liabilities side that is on left hand side share capital the first heading will be the share capital you have to take the authorized share capital then you have to take subscribed issued subscriber called up capital you have to deduct calls in arrears the other name of calls in arrears is calls unpaid so this is the first part share capital the second part second is reserve fund and other reserves or other funds always remember in reserve fund you have to take all the reserves all kinds of funds you can see the things i have given down statutory reserve fund building fund special development fund bad and doubtful debts reserve investment depreciation fund dividend equalization fund bonus equalization fund reserves and other funds always remember in this you have to take all the reserves funds which are there in the company the funds the third part is staff provident fund you have to show that separately always if it is given in the question you have to take the amount from there the fourth is secured loan under secured loan you have to take the debentures loans overdrafts and cash credit from banks loans from government other secured loans so that comes under secured loan the fifth part is unsecured loans under that loans cash credit and overdraft from central banks from governments from others and bills payable sixth part is deposits it can be in the form of fixed deposit recurring deposit saving deposits current deposit deposit at all at calls other deposits okay sixth one uh Sixth thing, seventh one is current liabilities and provisions. Uh, it can be all types of current liabilities, sundry creditors, any outstandings, outstanding creditors, and all like that, like outstanding salary, outstanding rent, and taxes, any kind of advances, unexpired subscription, premium and commission. The eighth part is unpaid dividend. And the ninth part is interest accrued, due but not paid. Tenth is other liabilities if it is specified. Eleventh is profit and loss for the last year. If any appropriations are there on that, you have to deduct.
deduct it and if current year profit is there you have to uh, calculate that and you have to add it then comes up the contingent liability to solve that so this is the liability side now on the ss side that is on right hand side you can see the first is cash or bank balance any cash transaction it can be cash on hand cash in bank in the form of current account saving account call deposits on banks the second is investments it can be in the form of government security other trustee securities non trustee securities shares of other cooperative societies shares debentures bonds or as per the companies registered under companies act fixed deposits the third is investments of staff provident fund okay if any advances also are related to that of staff provident fund you have to take it fourth is loans and advances loans overdrafts cash credit loans due by managing committee members loans due by secretary and other employees all this comes here the fifth is sundry debtors it can be credit on the credit sales on advances and others sixth is current assets like stores and spare parts loose tools stock in trade means it is the closing stock work in progress seventh is fixed assets you know all kinds of fixed assets like land and building leaseholds railway sidings plant and machinery furniture fixtures loose tools fittings livestock vehicles these all become as a kind of fixed assets eighth is miscellaneous expenditure and losses like goodwill preliminary expenses expenses connected with the issue of shares and debentures underwriting charges brokerage deferred revenue expenditure and the ninth is other items prepaid expenses interest accrued but the not due other items tenth is profit and loss accumulated loss written off not written off and the last is current losses so always remember you have to remember this format very well the balance sheet is going as per the form n this can come in the multiple type of question also the balance sheet as per the cooperative societies act goes in which form it, it goes in form n you have to study the headings of this liabilities and assets each and every heading you have to study very well and then you have to post to the items as per the question so these are the formats i have explained to you so study very well so that in the next lecture we can start with the sum thank you